Welcome to Strategic Insights, brought to you by Pride Staff. On each episode, we bring you interviews with leading management and employment experts from across the country. Your host for Strategic Insights is Brad Smith. And now, here's Brad. Hello, and thank you so much for listening in to Strategic Insights from Pride Staff. Today, we have an amazing episode. We're going to talk about how to choose a staffing partner and what you should really look at when evaluating staffing and workforce partners. On the episode today is Mike Harris, owner and strategic partner of the South Riverside County and Ontario, California office. Mike, thanks so much for joining us today. Well, you're welcome, Brad. I'm happy to provide my perspective to buyers on, you know, what things to consider to choose a staffing partner. There's a lot of staffing firms out there, but I think most companies uh, are really looking for someone to partner with to to really help them achieve their objectives. And Mike, I'm really excited to have you on the episode specifically because not only do you have great experience in helping work with companies of all sizes and many different industries with their workforce and staffing strategies, but in a past life, you were a buyer on the other side of the table too. So I think you're going to provide some great perspective for us today. Absolutely. All right. So let's dig in here. But Before we really talk about the main point of this episode, which is how to choose the right staffing agency, I want to talk a little bit about why to work with a staffing partner. So, Mike, can you give us a a high-level overview of what value choosing a strong staffing or workforce provider can provide to end companies? So, uh, first, I mean, I I think an agency uh, provides the focused, experienced resources that uh, provide access or should provide access to Specialized knowledge, clearly providing access to a wider quality talent pool, and also uh, help reduce or accelerate the time to fill, which in essence, when you think about, you know, when a company comes to a staffing firm, uh, they have an immediate need in most cases, right? And if that need isn't filled, you know, there's a bigger cost uh, to them in trying to get to whether they're a warehouse or a manufacturing facility, try to get product out the door. So I think it's, it's all three of those, specialized knowledge, access to talent pool, and reduce total costs, if you will, uh, of filling, uh, filling that need. The other thing is agencies bear, if not the majority uh, of the risk, certainly a, a large portion of the employment risk. Everything from wrongful termination, when an assignment ends, it's really you know, the, uh, the agency's responsibility, right, to make sure it's clearly defined as to why that assignment ended. There's the risk of workers' comp injuries. And finally, uh, you know, if uh, when an assignment ends and, and that associate, there's a challenge in getting them additional work, it's the employment agencies, the staffing agency, it's their unemployment reserve that gets hit. The one thing that we, I think we've all experienced, it's been a little bit different as well, is during the COVID times, what I have found is there's a lot of companies that are looking for a partner to assist in dealing with some of the COVID issues, in helping to provide access to resources such as plans and preparedness, uh, looking to agencies. Are they doing the screening, the appropriate screening of their candidates? Do they support and contribute in the contract tracing and reporting when there is an incident. So those are all reasons why I think companies come to staffing agencies. Those are really the the, the value proposition is in, in all three of those things I mentioned. Yeah, I think you're dead on, Mike. And now that we kind of understand the business case for working with a staffing partner and why it can make uh, so much sense across several different areas that you just outlined, how do you go about choosing the right one? So what are some of the biggest areas of concern that uh, the end company should look at when choosing a staffing provider? A good question. First, I, I am a big believer in, you know, if it truly is a partner, someone that's going to partner with you in your business, you want to make sure that that partner is ethical. There's a lot of staffing firms out there and not all play by the, the rules, if you will. So what do I mean by that? You know, is that agency complying with all wage and hour laws, right? Are they providing valid workers' compensation insurance coverage and classifications? Are they actually placing associates that are eligible to work in the U.S.? What are they doing to confirm that and assure that uh, through things like E-Verify? Do they provide the appropriate safety training and PPE equipment for their for their associates? In some uh, 
with some states, you know, there's the mandatory now sexual harassment prevention training. So are, are they conducting that with all the people and the associates that they place? And finally, do they provide valid certificate of insurance, right, to assure that buyer, if you will, that they truly are insured uh, to help protect that company that's using, uh, using uh, the agency's associates? So my compliance is obviously extremely important and we need to choose the right provider to make sure all of our bases are covered. Now, once you do do that and and you verify all of that as a buyer, how do you choose a company that provides quality associates? What should organizations look at to make sure that the end product that they're getting, the end people that they're getting are high quality? I think it's important to really understand kind of the, the recruiting uh, the assessment process that an agency goes through. Are they doing just upfront screening? You know, are they determining for the candidate they're speaking to? Do they have the relevant experience? Is it uh, within you know a, re- a reasonable time frame within the last six months? Uh, what is the uh, what is their desire in terms of pay and commute? You know, all those things are factors that if you don't figure that out upfront, right? You may be placing someone that might have the right skills. But, you know, they've got one foot in the door and one out as they're looking for something with a little bit better pay or shorter commute. Are they actually doing in-person interviews? Do they actually meet with the associates? And, you know, given the COVID situation, that's not been as easy. So are they doing the appropriate things to meet with the associates? Do they do reference checking? And, and that isn't just, you know, talking to family and friends. Are they getting positive business references? Do they do, as I mentioned earlier, the things such as running E-Verify to ensure that the associates that they're placing are actually eligible to work in the U.S.? If required, do they actually do background checks and do they do the drug screens if that's a requirement? Lastly, I, I think it's important that the recruiters walk the facility. Right. It's extremely important for them to understand the work environment, to actually meet with supervisors, to see what it is that the associates will be doing so that they can better manage the expectation of the associates that they're placing on what's it going to be like so that there isn't no surprise the day they walk into the door of their first assignment. Uh, I think that's extremely important that you do have recruiters that know the environment, know the client and can best explain that to associates that they're placing. Now, Mike, with any type of business, there's industry leaders, there's average players, there's unfortunately some some companies that are a little below average. What metrics can a company or an employer look at to better gauge the future success of a staffing partner? Are there different metrics you suggest that they dig into and look at? Yes. And in fact, even before the metrics I'll touch on here is, you know, does the staffing agency, the staffing partner, do they have a relevant experience? You know, have they actually served clients in the same or similar industry? Have they served clients in same or similar environments, right? Do they have the experience with the positions that that particular buyer is looking to fill? So those are important. In terms of performance metrics that should be examined and understood is what's the agency's fill ratio? Fill ratio meaning how many placements did they fill of the open positions? So if there was 10 open positions and they're only filling half of those on a timely manner when that client needs them, then they have a, they have a fill ratio of 50%. The other thing to look at, how long does it take? So what's the time to fill those particular positions? Thirdly, what percentage of the associates actually return at the end of the day, at the end of the week, complete the assignment successfully, and if it's attempt to hire, how many are actually converted? How many of those placements actually the client is able to convert when they hit their conversion period? Uh, Those are all things that should be examined and compared collectively across agencies that a company might be evaluating. The last thing that I would add, not a metric, but I hear this so often on new prospects is, What's their level of communication and are they communicating in a way that meets my needs as a buyer, right? Everything from the frequency and clarity, do they talk about the progress, right? Or when I place an order as a buyer, does it go into a black hole? Are they keeping me apprised of the progress they're making? Tell me about challenges. One of the things that I talk to my recruiters a lot about is often, you know, the the client may be 
trying to place an, an individual at a pay rate that is below what is considered market. And I tell my recruiters, we can't just use that as the excuse. Let's present candidates, right, that meet their hiring criteria, that have the experience they're looking for, and let's let them know what their pay requirements are. But let's also then present another candidate that will accept their pay, but show them you know, where they might be short and let the client then decide, let the buyer decide, are they willing to take somewhat, maybe a little lesser experience and train them? Or does it help them understand better what the going market rate is? So I'm a big believer in transparency and directness and how we communicate to our clients. If we've got a, what's considered a purple squirrel, something that is very tough to fill, we need to explain that to a client and explain to them why it's a challenge to fill that position. So directness and transparency in communication, I think, is as important as some of the metrics that we talked about. I think you're dead on, and I love that consultative approach because oftentimes the end hiring manager, the end company may not have access to the data the background, the benchmarking tools that you have. And by bringing that to the table, you're helping their overall workforce at several different levels. So I think it's extremely important to choose a provider that has access to that type of insightful information. Mike, when looking at staffing providers, there's no shortage of staffing providers. So how can an organization quickly take a look? Are things like social proof, reviews, things like that, useful tools to look at and help evaluate staffing providers? Social proof, to me, can reveal an awful lot, and you can get that very quickly. You know, check out online reviews. You can go to Google, Yelp, and Facebook. Those are all places you can go and and look at both what clients are saying about that agency, but also the associates, the employees. That's extremely important as well, because at the end of the day, an agency is serving both. Right. Without good talent, we can't deliver good service. So look at the reviews. Find out whether or not that particular agency has a third party that does satisfaction surveys. There's a company called Clearly Rated that surveys the staffing industry multiple times a year. And and they're talking to both clients as well as associates. And a little plug for Pride Staff, Pride Staff has consistently rated the highest we've gotten the highest award the best of staffing diamond award for seven consecutive years we're the only firm that has achieved that both with the talent our associates as well as the clients so check out reviews find out what third party firms that do satisfaction surveys are saying about that agency so mike as with any buying decision price can be a factor so there are low cost providers out there that sell on low markups or or low margins what should companies look at when considering price as a factor good question first i feel that too often buyers tend to focus on markup and markup exclusively and there's many factors that are considerations or impact that markup First, just look at the recruiting costs. And what are the factors that go into the recruiting costs? Well, what is the pay rate? Are we trying to place someone in a position where the pay rate is well below market? How fillable is it? From a supply and demand, what is the supply and the current market for the positions that uh, you're trying to fill for that particular client? Is it a temporary position or is it a temp to hire? Clearly attracting someone to a temp to hire position is, is going to be something that is going to be much easier to do and therefore reduce the total cost if you know impact that markup. Also, is it a part-time or a full-time position? So clearly a consideration that goes into that markup is a recruiting cost. Secondly, the worker comp rates and classifications. If you're placing someone in an office clerical position, that rate for workers comp is a lot lower than if I'm placing someone in a warehouse where there's forklifts uh, that could potentially cause injuries, right? And then, you know, is the client requiring backgrounds and drug screens, right? To focus exclusively on markup, I think you really have to take all those things and consider. I am a big believer and try to coach my clients and prospects that I talk to is look at the total cost of staffing and what are the factors impacting total costs? It's some of the things I've mentioned. How long does it take them to fill that order? The longer it takes, the more it's becoming costly, right? Because you're not getting product out the door. 
what is their fill ratio? How many of the positions are they actually able to fill within the time frame that you need them? Are they able to convert on attempt to hire? What percentage of the associates that that agency is placing, are they actually able to hire when they reach that conversion period? So those are all things that contribute to total costs. And when you think about the end of the day, right, you can have a really good markup, but if you're failing on those things I just mentioned, right, it's costing you. So one of the things that we spend a lot of time and I help my clients understand is if I've got a track record with an associate, I have greater confidence on how they're going to perform. Now, do they, do they surprise us and disappoint us that time? Absolutely. But if I can run a higher, what I call redeployment percentage, I know that I can look that client in the eye and let them know that I have confidence. Here's how the person perform. Maybe there's areas that I say, here's where they might need some coaching. But I wouldn't know that had I not placed them. So it really comes down to, am I attracting and retaining that people continue to come to me as an agency that I can place them? What are the things that I'm doing in terms of attracting and retaining? Do we provide, does that agency provide holiday pay? Do they do rewards and recognitions? What's their policy on no call, no show? Are they taking an individual who just didn't show up at a client, never called, and are they placing them again? Those are all things that you want to try to find out that do contribute to the total cost. And I believe that that is a better focus than just looking at markup. The last thing I'll add is, does the agency have a financial placement guarantee? Pride staff does, and I'll touch on this a little bit later, but if we place someone at the end of the first day, if that individual is not working out, is a client billing for that? And what are they doing in terms of the replacement associate they place? How are they stepping up to that? So do they provide a financial placement guarantee, which really puts confidence in how do they, how confident are they that the person that they're placing is going to stick? Mike, great insight there. Now, at the end of the day, an organization is going to choose to work with a staffing company because they need to fill open positions. They need to hire. Those employees can come from a number of different sources. Is it important for the end hiring manager, the end company, to evaluate where a staffing partner is recruiting from? Should they care? Absolutely. Uh, again, I think it comes back to you know my opening comment about the value proposition why you use an agency. You want to have access to all of the job boards, you know, whether that be Zip Recruiter, Career Builder, Indeed, Monster, Snake, that agency should have access to all those because in most cases, that company that's come to an agency does not. The second is what are they and how are they using social media, Facebook and LinkedIn for various positions? But I gotta tell you our experience, and if you read current literature right now, you will find that one of the best sources is employee referrals. So what is that agency's employee referral program? We at Pride Staff feel that we've got a market leading employee referral program, wherein when a, an associate refers another associate, when that associate gets a certain amount of hours, that referring associate gets a $100 gift card. So what are they doing? Because end of the day, they're vouching for that person. And at Pride Staff, if someone refers a bad apple, we're gonna call them on it and we're gonna take them off that program for a while. But you will find that some of the best sources right now are employee referrals, particularly in you know, what we're experiencing with unemployment and concerns about people going into organizations fearful of COVID, right? So those are the things, and yes, I do believe it's important for a buyer of staffing services to understand what sources the agency is using. So Mike, switching gears a little bit, talk to me a little bit about different types of staffing companies. There's generalists that fill a variety of different positions. There's specialists that focus on a very specific niche industry. Talk to me a little bit about the difference and how should the end employer go about choosing the right partner? Yeah, I think one of the things to first look at is just the type of placements that they do. Right, depending upon what the needs are, do you just have a need for temporary resources, some defined period of time? Are they specialists at direct hires? You know, what percentage of the placements that they do are temp to hire? So really dependent upon what the needs are, you really need to understand kind of where is their focus, right? 
what percentage of the, the placements they do run across those three different types of placements. The next thing to look at is, you know, is there specialty around light industrial? And I'll talk a little bit about what some of those positions are, or is it clerical? Or is it a combination? You know, clearly, if you're just a generalist, well, then you're probably not going to get the best quality, right? And it comes back to my comment about redeployment, right? If I've got people who I placed in the past in various positions, I'm going to go to those first. So it really depends on, you know, where is the focus in terms of position. Light industrial within a warehouse, it's everything from general labor, forklift operators, pick pack ship, receiving, inventory management on the manufacturing uh, and light assembly. You know, it's everything from machine operators to QC inspection to manufacturing leads. And the clerical side, you know, it's accounts payable, accounts receivable. It's the accounting, customer service, uh, reps, office admin, billing, so on and so forth. So it's important to both understand the types of placements that that particular firm does, as well as the positions. Uh, and what do they not do? In Pride Staff's case, we don't do drivers on public roads for a variety of reasons. We do very limited placements in the construction industry. We don't do any placements around healthcare patient care or retail. So understand you know, what it is they do and what they don't do and, and try to get that right up front before you even asking them and telling them about the positions that you're interested in having them fill. So Mike, we've talked a lot about doing your due diligence and your research and choosing the right partner, but in some cases, no matter how much due diligence and research you do, a staffing company at some point may not meet standards. They may not perform up to par. What are some of the warning signs for hiring managers for companies when it's time to start evaluating maybe changing your staffing partner? A good question. And again, not to sound like a broken record, but I continue to come back. I'm a metrics person and try to help clients that I serve understand our metrics and how they might compare to others that they've used. So, you know, again, back to the time to fill, the fill ratios, number of placements it takes to fill a given position, which really addresses kind of the churn. You know, it may take me three people before I actually fill that one position. What percentage of the associates complete the assignment are actually converted? I talk to a lot of prospects that the associates perform very well in attempt to hire situation, but when it came time for them to actually convert and hire them, they didn't pass background or they didn't pass drug screen. Those were things that were required of the agency. Now, we all know things can happen within that assignment period, but that's usually unlikely. So I do hear companies that use agencies, right, where they get good quality people, but per their policies of background and drug, right, they didn't pass when they went to hire them. So those are all things to try to understand in evaluating, you know, how a particular agency has performed in the past. So Mike, this was some amazing insight. I'm sure those listening found a lot of value in it and will help them choose the right partner. Now I want to turn things around a little bit. We talked about what a company should look for in a staffing provider. I want to give you an opportunity to outline how Pride Staff excels. What do you do great at there at Pride Staff? Well, I'm happy to address that and was waiting for that. So happy that I can uh, just provide um, the Pride Staff perspective. So, I mean, first of all, I think what Pride Staff represents is we are a national provider with national resources that we can draw upon. But we're also, because we are a franchise, we're the local owners and operators. So you really have the best of both worlds in that you've got the national resources at your disposal, but you got an owner, the one throat to choke right in your market. So that's number one. Second, we have industry leading client and talent satisfaction loyalty. I mentioned the firm clearly rated. I mentioned how Pride Staff over the, the uh, last seven consecutive years has achieved the highest award, which is the Best of Staffing Diamond Award, Net Promoter Score. Those are all things that you know I think are important. The proof is in the pudding right there, right? We can talk about all the metrics, but at the end of the day, how does the how do the clients and the talent, the associates that we place, how do they rate us? What do they say about us? I mean, clearly we have very good online reviews. We have over 3,500 client testimonials. I think it says a lot, again, relative to how we perform. 
does the agency, and, and certainly Pride Staff does, provide value adds? What are the things they do beyond just placing good quality people? You know, in Pride Staff's case, we have monthly innovations that provide both our talent as well as our clients topical items, whether it be around in some cases here recently COVID and how, you know, does one have to prepare and think about it to just very topical things. We do innovations live webinar series, uh, podcasts and thought leadership such as this. Those are all things to look at, right? Because at the end of the day, you can you know, place people, you can place quality people, but what are they doing as a partner? Kind of what I started with, right? There's lots of agencies, but you really want a partner. Are they providing you value beyond just good quality placements? Now, finally, uh, an important thing I believe is we have done things and do things to lower the total cost of temporary staffing, right? And, and I attribute that back to the quality of associates. What are the things that we do to attract and retain quality associates? I talked about we have a high redeployment rate. I pay a lot of attention to that because if I can look a client in the eye and tell them about the person that we're about to place, I have greater confidence in how they're going to perform. A high percentage of our associates complete the assignments and can be and are converted when the client wants to convert them. We have a very strict no call, no show policy, uh, wherein if you know a client or an associate doesn't show up and has not called us or given us a reasonable explanation, we're not going to place them again. We're not going to replicate that past problem. Uh, finally, there's things that we do to continue to attract and retain top talent. Uh, we have, as I mentioned, the market leading employee referral program. We do offer and provide associate rewards and recognition. We have holiday pay that we pay our associates. We don't bill our clients for that. But at the end of the day, we're not perfect because we are dependent on others. We're dependent upon associates that even when they are people who we placed in the past, there are things that are happening in their life that have changed. So they may not be as reliable. So we offer a placement guarantee. Those are all things that I believe differentiate Pride Staff and place us in the agency partner category that others aren't able to claim. Mike, thank you so much for your time. You've obviously done an amazing job outlining the value of working with a staffing agency and more specifically elevating and showcasing how Pride Staff can be a premier partner for organizations all across the country. We encourage everyone listening to visit pridestaff.com where you can learn more about the value of staffing. You can reach out and connect with a local office in your market for some expert workforce consulting. Mike, thank you again so much for your time today. Really appreciated the insight. And I appreciate your uh, facilitating this, Brad. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Strategic Insights, brought to you by Pride Staff. Whether you're looking for high-level workforce consulting or staffing help to meet demands, Pride Staff is here to help.